go. This is 4.8. And we're going to talk about right triangle trigonometry. And we're also going to talk about bearings towards the end of class. Okay? So kind of like two things, but they're going to merge into one. Um, so first of all, we're going to um, do some right triangle trigonometry. Not all of these, but some of these are going to be word problems. A large portion of these are going to be word problems. And three quarters of these are going to be word problems. Okay? So on the word problems, here's what you need to remember. That you get half credit. Now this is only on the worksheet, guys. Only on the worksheet. Half credit for your picture. As long as it's labeled and correct, okay? And you're going to get half credit for the correct answer. Okay, so half credit for a picture. Now, sometimes the picture is the hardest thing to do. And once you get your picture, then you're, you're like, oh, man, I can work that problem. Okay, so I'm really stressing the picture. All right. So we have one, two, three examples to work, and then we're going to talk about bearings. And then tomorrow when we come into class, I will um, work, I'll, I'll work one bearing problem, and then I will give you two worksheets. Okay? And you will have tomorrow in class and Friday in class to work on them, and your test will be Monday. It's a one-day test. Okay? I'm ready to learn. Worksheets will be due Monday. I thought you said it was going to be Tuesday. No, it's going to be Monday. We, uh, we got plenty, I think we got plenty of time. And if you work hard in class, you can get a large portion of these done. Okay? So here we go. Example two. Example two. This is what it reads. I mean, it's a reading problem. It says, a safety regulation states that the maximum angle of elevation for a rescue ladder is 72 degrees, okay? The maximum angle of elevation for a rescue ladder is 72 degrees. So that means it can't be slanted more than 72 degrees because it's too straight up, you know, up and down. And it will be hard to rescue someone from that ladder and it is a rescue ladder, you understand? Okay, um, a fire department's longest ladder is 110 feet. What's the maximum safe Rescue height. Okay, so here's what we got, guys. We got a building over here. When you say picture, you're talking about triangles, right? Yeah, you can draw a triangle if you're boring. You draw a triangle. <laughs> I'm drawing a picture. But you can be boring. I'm okay. But so like we get. I understand. Some of y'all can't help it. So, Ooh, wow. No, I'm, I'm, just I'm just playing. I'm just Don't be so sensitive. All right, so we got a fire over here. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. We got a lady. Mine looks like an octopus. In the top building. floor. Okay. She's hollering for help. All right. So we called the fire department. What's happening? <laughs> That's a good truck. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> Eli's just trying to raise his leg. <laughs> Actually. Okay, remember what we talked about, okay? So, our fire truck, um, it has a rescue ladder on the back of it. All right, so here's my ladder going up here. Okay, now here's what it says. This angle of elevation, this is the angle of elevation right here. Okay, from the ground over. It can be no more than 72 degrees. Oh, just a triangle. Where's my triangle? Right here. No, I said it's just a triangle. Yes. Um, it's 72 degrees. My ladder is 110 feet. What is the maximum height? How tall can I go up and save someone? Okay. If I'm just out of reach, people break that 72 degree angle rule, okay? 
I'll make it worth your while. All right? So, um, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to look at your triangle, and then with respect to the angle, you're going to label the sides. Okay? So with respect to this angle right here, what would we call this side over here? Opposite. And what would we call this side right here? Hypotenuse. Okay, because we hope that our building is standing at a right angle, right? Okay, because it's not, we're not in, I don't even know where that place is. We're not at the leaning tower of Peter, right? Because right. he's not. Is that, you know, is that in, in Italy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's why she looked at me with that little. Peter? <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, what function deals with the opposite and hypotenuse? Uh, what? Oh, sine. Sine. Opposite. Okay. Oh, so okay. I'm going to go the sine of what? 72 is equal to opposite. What is that? X over hypotenuse. What's that? 110. Solving for X, guys. Solving for X. Tell me what to do. Times 110. These cancel out, and x is equal to. We take our little calculator. What's the first thing we need to make sure of on our calculator? Yeah, because y'all listen to me. If you're using new school's calculator, those um, Algebra 2 kids are resetting that thing all the time. And when you reset it, it goes back to radians, all right? So go to mode and make sure you're in degrees, all right? So I'm going to say 110 times the sine of 72. <coughs> So 104.62 feet. Is that reasonable? Mm -hmm. That's right. reasonable. Yes. We know it's not going to be more than what? Our hypotenuse, which is 110. Yeah, more than 110. I mean, it, since it's only 72 degrees, it really shouldn't even be close. I mean, you know, too terribly close to 110. Okay, that means that ladder would be straight up and down. And if you're trying to carry someone down that ladder and it's straight up and down, probably not going to look. All right, so everybody okay? Anybody got a question? Okay, so let's do example three. Okay, now this one might have some things in it that you've never heard of. Okay, so let's just talk about it for a second. Because I'm going to use the word smokestack. Okay, so what's a smokestack? It's a stack of smoke. No. Is, that where the, is that where they cook the meat? That's a smoke shack, yes. bro. Okay? Oh, so, Courtney says it's the thing on top of the house. It's like a chimney. That's exactly wow. what it is. It's a smoke stack, Where's okay? The they call it a smoke stack. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, here we go. Are you listening? Yes, Aiden? It says, at a point 200 feet from the base of a building. I'm going to read the whole thing, and then I'm going to just kind of read some of it, and we'll draw a picture. Okay? So... At a point 200 feet from the base of a building, the angle of elevation to the bottom of a smokestack is 35 degrees, and the angle of elevation to the top is 53 degrees. Find the height of the smokestack alone. All right, so here we go. At a point, now look, did I ask you to have, does everybody know what's going on? Did I say that? Did I say that? Did I say, does everybody know what's going on? You know what your picture looks like? No. I didn't say that, did I? I said I was going to read the whole thing and then go back and just read pieces of it. Okay? So come on, people. At a point 200 feet from the base of a building. Can you do that? Can you draw that? I think you can draw that. At a point 200 feet from the base of a building. So obviously you got a building. I'm going to be good at drawing Okay, so got my building, all right, and I'm 200 feet from the building, so here we are, 200 feet. Everybody got it? Yes. Okay, so here's what it says, the angle of elevation, now listen to me, let's make sure that you understand about angles of elevation and angles of depression. Do you remember we studied these before? Angles of elevation and angles of depression are all formed with a horizontal. All formed with a horizontal. Which one is the scariest, most difficult one? The depression. Okay, the depression. Because if I say angle of elevation, look, I'm going to show you a picture. Okay, I'm going to draw a picture. It has nothing to do with this one, so I'm going to go to another sheet of paper. Matter of fact, I'm going to use the 
this guy right here. Okay? So, we, this is the same picture that I drew for y'all when we talked about these before. I said you had a building and there was a man on top of the building. Okay? And he was looking down at a scary dog. Do you remember this? Yeah. And then he jumped. No. Please don't jump. He tried to get the dog. Oh, and then you drew yeah, that guy. Yeah, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right? So, he was looking down. Now, listen to me. The angle of depression from the guy to the dog. The angle of depression from the guy to the dog. Is that this angle right here? No. No. I don't know. Okay, so listen to me. From the guy to the dog. The angle of depression from the guy to the dog. What did we say about angles of elevation and angles of depression? They're formed with a... Is this a horizontal, people? No. So you have to draw the horizontal. Okay? This is the angle of depression. Okay? Do you see the angle of elevation from the dog to the man? Yes. Did I have to draw the bottom of it? No, because see, the other Yeah, your eye sees that ground. There's my angle of elevation. Now, y'all listen to me. What do you know about these two lines right here? They're lateral. Okay. And this is my transversal. Are you with me? These are what kind of angles? No. Alternate interior angles. Okay? Let me tell you why they call them alternate interior angles. Do you see that they're on alternate sides of the transversal? Yes, ma'am. Do you see that they're on the insides of my parallel lines? Yes, ma'am. So, alternate interior. What do you know about <coughs> alternate interior angles? They're equal. equal, equal. They're equal. Okay? They're equal. All right? So, um, so y'all, you're gonna we're gonna be talking about that kind of stuff. That stuff's gonna come come up. All right? So here it goes. The angle of elevation. Um, what does it say? The angle of elevation to the bottom of the smokestack is 35 degrees. The angle of elevation to the top of the smokestack. Now y'all look. If he has to look up 35 degrees to see the bottom of the smokestack, where do you think the smokestack is? On top of the roof. That's exactly right. So on top of this building, you got a smokestack. So this is a multiple story building that has a fireplace in it? No, it's not a fireplace, it's a smokestack. Okay? Yeah, it's like a plant. Think about yeah. it. It's more like a plant and they're evidently they're burning something and incinerating something in here and it's creating smoke. Do they can they let the smoke fill the building? No. So they have a smokestack. Okay? So the angle of elevation to the bottom of the smokestack is thirty five degrees. Okay? Now you draw the next one. Listen to this. The angle of elevation to the top of the smokestack is 53 degrees. Draw it. The angle of elevation to the top of the smokestack is 53 degrees. So now you went from this point where the guy is up to the top, right? Oh. And this whole big angle is 53 degrees. Okay? Now, look what I want to know. I want to know how tall is this smokestack. That's all I want to know, that little piece right there. So tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you think you might. What's a plan? You can add your two angles. Oh, you can figure it out. I don't need to add the two angles because I have the whole big angle. Subtract 90 from 53. Subtract 50 sharp. Nobody knows. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here's what Jonathan is saying, okay? He's saying, hey, man, we got two triangles here. Here's one of them. Everybody see that one? Yeah. What's the angle right over here? 35. What? 53. 53. Thank you very much. And then we have this triangle right here. What's the angle over here in the pink? 35. 35. So if I found this big yellow side and then this little pink side, do you understand what I'm doing? Okay. Let's say that this big yellow side right here, we'll call it A. And this little side right here, we'll call it B. Tell me how to find X. A minus B. Yeah, A minus B. Okay? So that's my plan. X is the smokestack. So A minus B is going to be the height of the smokestack. So let's find A first. All right? With respect to this big angle right here, because I'm talking about the yellow triangle, what's this side called? Opposite. Opposite. Very good. And what's this side right here called? Adjacent. It's not the hypotenuse, people, because this, this is my 
by 90 right here, okay? So this is opposite and this is adjacent. What function deals with opposite and adjacent? Tangent. tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of what? 35. What? 53. Thank you. People, I'm working on the yellow triangle. It has nothing to do with the 35, okay? The tangent of 53 is equal to opposite, we called it A, over adjacent, 200. See, that confuses me because when I think of A, I think of adjacent. Yeah, me too. And then when you say oh, well, oh, opposite is okay, A. Okay, we'll call it C for Colton then. I don't care. It doesn't matter. All right, so um, here we go. Solving for A, tell me what to do. Multiply by 200. So multiply by 200, both sides. On the right, it cancels out. And A, not standing for adjacent, is... 265 times the tangent of 53. So 265.41. I'm rounding mine off because it, it, most of the time it's going to say round off to two decimal places, so I'm going to keep mine there. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, now we've got A. What do we need to find? B. B, okay. So let's find B. B is dealing with a small pink triangle, right? Am I still opposite and adjacent? Yes. yes. So I'm still doing tangent. So the tangent, um, this time it's what? 35 is equal to opposite B over adjacent 200. Let me just do the same thing. So B is equal to, this time I'll say, I'm going to go up there and cheat and grab that problem and Go back and make that a 35. So 140.04, right? That's a zero, sorry. I messed him up. Okay, so now how do I find the, the height of the smokestack? Subtract A and B. Yeah, 265.41 minus 140.04, and it is? 125.37 feet. Is that reasonable? Yeah, that's that's reasonable. If it had been 1,253, would that have been reasonable? Probably not, Probably not reasonable. What if it had been 12.5? No. People, that's not reasonable, no. Especially for an industry, okay? Especially for an industry. All right, anybody got a question? Wait, so our, our small stack is almost as tall as the building? <laughs> Well, we don't know. It's a big smoke tag. You know, yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he is. But smoke tag, I, we used to have a smoke set back when we were in, when I lived in Arkansas. And remember I told you it was a paper mill town? Yeah. So back in the olden days, okay, um, we had a giant smoke stack. And he was probably, I'm going to say that thing must have been over 200 feet tall. It was huge, huge, huge. And then, I don't remember, a long time ago, they oh knocked it down. They don't use it anymore. Uh -oh. Okay? They don't use it anymore. So they're like safer ways to do it now? Yeah. Yes, there are safer ways. Safer ways. Now, y'all, look, look. I asked the other kids. I asked the other kids this question, so I'm going to ask you this question. Let's say that, let's pretend that our smokestack was actually made out of um, metal or something. It was a pipe. Yes. Okay, like they, oh, even in, in chimneys and houses now, do they build the chimneys all the way down to the ground much anymore? No, no. no they don't. They might put a chimney on top of the roof to make it look like it does, but a lot of times they don't even do that. Okay, so they just put a pipe. So let's pretend that our smokestack was a pipe. Do you think this is how, if you worked out at the mill and they said, hey, I need to know the hei height of that smokestack because we've got to put a new pipe there. Do you think this is the way they're going to find the height of the smokestack? No, they're going to go from the, where it starts all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is the only part that needs replacing. They don't know that. They didn't explain it. Maybe this is the only part. I'm just asking you if they were looking for the height of this right here. Well, most would, of the time. Um, would, is this the way they would find it? No. Oh, so they would climb up there on the top of it and say, Eli, I'm going to drop the measuring tape down. Would you get it? 
No, they would find an angle. So here's how they would find an angle. They would find the angle using a tool that is called a sextant. Do y'all know what a sextant Whoa, is? The, the six. Uh, the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Sexton. Colin Sexton. What is he talking? I don't even want to know what he's talking about because we're about a basketball player. Oh, okay. Okay. I was like, I don't want to. I thought he was talking about. I thought he said. Never mind. I'm not going to say. I don't. I'm not going to say. No. Have you ever been on the side of the highway? Oh, I stay there. No. I mean, have you seen on the side of the highway when they have those tri? Y'all listen. Those tripods, and they're looking through them like a telescope. That's a sextant. Oh, yeah, it's a surveying tool. It's a surveying tool. Okay? So, yes, that's how they do that. So, this is how they do it. They do need to know some trig, people. Why can't they just keep the instructions that, like, put it up there? Well, maybe the person that worked there and knew that. Maybe he left or something. Okay, yeah. All right. And what are you going to say to your boss? Um, I don't know how to call that. No, you say go on home. Okay, so here's yours. Here's yours. You're going to draw this picture. This is going to be the most difficult picture. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to read the whole problem and then I'm going to say a couple of things. So don't start drawing until I say some stuff, okay? So a swimming pool is 20 meters long and 12 meters wide. Don't draw it yet, okay? So um, the bottom of the pool is slanted so that the water is 1.3 meters at the shallow end and 4 meters at the deep end. Do you understand? Yes. You see what's going on? Find the angle of depression of the bottom of the pool. Oh. So do I want a 12 by 20 rectangle on my paper? No, you want a triangle. Well, it could be a square with a triangle in it. Okay, so we're, what, what, what view of the pool am I looking for? The side, the side view, okay? The side view. And does the slant go from, does the slant go short ways or long ways? Long ways. Okay, so this is what we need to draw. Is the slant really slanted on a swimming pool or is it just slightly? Slightly. Okay, if you're really short, it feels like sometimes it's really slanted. If you get on it, and all of a sudden you start sliding down sometimes. But it's not. You're right, Miss Davis. I'll go off too. Okay. Okay, so do you agree that this is a side view of my, and it is exaggerated a tad, okay, of my swimming pool? Okay, so let's see. What about 20 meters long? Does that go anywhere on my picture? Yes. Where? I was the top. The top. Also, way down. That is 20 meters, okay? You said the slant, the slant, the slant, the slant went long ways, so that's the way I made it go, okay? What about 12 meters wide? Is that anywhere on my picture? Yeah. Where? No, no, never mind. That's not, okay? Yeah, it's not on your picture. If you wanted a 3D model, it would be right here. Okay, this is your 12. No, we don't really need that in our picture. Now it looks like it's just getting bigger on one side. Okay, so, um, all right, so here's my next numbers. Are you ready? Yes. The bottom of the pool is slanted so that the water is 1.3 in the shallow end and 4 in the deep end. Put the numbers where they belong. 1.3 in the shallow, 4 in the deep. Is this meters? Your 3D model. Meters? Yeah, it is. Sorry. Okay, so 1.3 meters in the shallow end and 4 meters in the deep end. Okay, look, here's your water, guys. Okay, there's the water in my pool. All right, here's what it asks. Find the angle of depression to the bottom of the pool. The angle of depression to the bottom of the pool. Can you explain now, depression again? What? Angle of depression? Yeah. I don't remember ever learning that. Okay. Angle, angle of depression is from a horizontal down. From a horizontal down. Angle of elevation is from a horizontal up. Okay. Okay? So, angles of depression, you're probably... I'm going to say 85 to 90% of the time, you're going to have to draw something. Yeah. 
okay? Angles of elevation, normally you don't have to draw a set. Either your eye sees it or it'll be there. Okay, so what, what am I telling you about this picture? You're gonna need to draw something, okay? I wanna draw a horizontal to make, so I'll know what angle of depression I'm talking about. Do y'all know where it goes? Oh, it's horizontal, not vertical. This is my angle of depression right here. It is how far, look, y'all, it's how far the, the thing goes down from a horizontal. How far does that, the bottom of that pool go down from that horizontal? That's my angle of depression. How much is it depressed downward? Okay, so let's see what we know. Do we know this side of our triangle? Look, do you see my triangle? Oh, no, that's 20 meters. That's crazy. Here's my triangle right here. Yes. Okay. You with me? Okay, do you know this side right here? Yes, yes, 20 meters. 20 meters. Okay. Now, do you know this side down here? No. 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 Do you know this side? No. Yes. yes. Uh, we don't know it, but we can find it, right? Yes. How are you going to find this little piece right here? Yes. Yeah, the whole thing, 4 minus the shallow part, 1.3. Okay? So I'm going to say 4 minus 1.3 is what? 2.7? So this little piece right here is 2.7. Okay? Are you with me? I'm looking for an angle. And this is, with respect to this angle, what's this side called? Adjacent. Adjacent. Y'all look, everybody, look, oh. Eli, this is my right angle, this is my hypotenuse. Okay, opposite the right angle is always your hypotenuse. Okay, so this is the adjacent side, and this is the opposite side. Do you agree with that? Okay, so opposite and adjacent deal with what function? Tangent. Tangent. Now, what am I looking for? Side. What? Angle. An angle. If you're looking for an angle, what kind of function do you have to use? An inverse. Inverse. Very good. So I'm going to do an inverse tan of what's opposite? 2.7 over adjacent. 20. Because we're looking for an angle. Anytime you're looking for an angle, you have to use the inverse. The only time you use the inverse is when? When you're looking for an angle, okay? So now I'm going to go second and tan, because that's inverse tan, all right, of 2.7 divided by 20. So there's my angle. This is equal to theta. So theta is 7.69 degrees, okay? Is that reasonable? Yes. <coughs> ah, that's reasonable. That's, okay. not, that's not too steep. That's not very um, steep. If I had gotten like 35 degrees, I would have said, whoa, wait a minute. I think something's wrong, okay, because they're not that steep. Does everybody understand? All right, anybody got a question? Wait, so if we were to find that side, would this we side do right here? opposite over hypotenuse? I would have done if I had if I was looking for this side right here. Would you do sine? Um, then I would do um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I would do Pythagorean theorem. Uh, that way you don't have to use anything that they you know that you found. Um, although you could use this angle if you wanted to, but you risk maybe making a mistake. Okay. okay? All right. Anybody else got a question? Okay. So now we're going to talk about something different. At first, you're going to think, why are these two related? But we're going to put them all together, okay? You're really going to like that. Okay, so we're going to talk about trig and bearings. Actually, we're just going to talk about bearings for today. Tomorrow, we're going to pull in a trig problem. I'm going to work one problem tomorrow, and then the rest of the time is yours. Okay, so it's just how to apply bearings and use your trig to figure it out. Okay, so let's talk about, there's two different ways to do bearings and you have to know both of them. Okay, so I'm going to show you one way. So, one way, bearings. A bearing is simply a direction. 
That's all it is. If someone said, I'm taking a bearing of 32 degrees, that means that I'm going in that direction. Okay? It is the acute, acute angle. All right? Notice when I'm doing it this first way, I'm going to number this with a Roman number one because this is one way to do it. These angles will all be acute. In the second way that I teach you, they will not all be acute. Matter of fact, the majority of them will not be acute. All right? But they won't look anything alike. It won't look, you won't be like, I wonder how if I'm going to be able to tell the difference. Oh, yes. They don't look anything alike. Okay? So this one has to be an acute angle. A path or a line of sight makes with a, and I'm going to write this in a different color, okay? Fixed, fixed, that means it always is this way, fixed north-south line. Okay, I'm writing this in a different color because when we do the other bearings, which are the ones that we use most of the time, every time I draw a north-south line, mine will be pink. I suggest that when you get to where we're working problems, that every time you draw a north-south line, you make it a specific color. Okay, and I'll explain to that when we get to it. All right, so I'm going to draw some up here, okay, and where I'm going to tell you what they look like. All right, so here's the first one. You know this is north. This is south, this is east, and this is west. Everybody know that? Y'all learned never eat sour watermelon. Is that right? Worms. I still learned never eat salty worms. Oh, okay. I would never eat salty worms. Okay, so here's what I'm going to This is the bearing that I'm going to give you. Okay? This, I have to tell you this angle. Shh. 35 degrees. This is my bearing. This blue line right here. The, the arrow on it says this is the direction that I'm going. That's my bearing. Okay? So I can name this bearing in more than one way. All right? First of all, I could name this bearing south, starting off south. I'm moving how many degrees? 35. 35. So I put a 35. In which direction? East. To the east. So that's one way I could name this bearing. Okay? Here's another way you could name that bearing. What's this angle right here? If this angle's 35, what's this guy? 55. 55. Ooh. Okay, this is 55. So what's another way to name it? You could start here. East, 55 south. East, and go 55 degrees south. Okay, do not put east south 55 degrees. Don't do that. Okay? All right, so here's another one. Are you ready? Yeah. Tell me two ways. Two ways I can name that bearing. Is that a 30? 80. You do it on your paper, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, you got it?
All right, anybody got a question? Do we need another one? No. Okay. Okay. If anybody sees a sign that says Obi-Wan, Sean is in for it. What? Sean lost his phone. And so we think somebody stole it from the gym. That would make me so mad. It has a picture of the Sixty degrees. Sixty degrees. We're thinking it was Sixty degrees. Okay, so it was Okay, you got the answer? Yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, is this all, does it get any harder than this, or is this still the problem? Oh, no. Oh, berries, the berry problems. Is the type of problem? Yeah, we are, we're going to work on some berry problems. They're going to be the most difficult. Um, so it's going to be, a, it gets a little crazy. All right, so tell me this berry using the 60. North 60 East. Yeah. North 60 degrees east. Okay? Now, if this is 60, what's this guy down here? 30. Okay? Now use the 30 degrees and tell me what it is. East 30 degrees. Very good. East 30 degrees north. Remember what we talked about, guys. Okay. So, do I need to, um, do I need to write some and make you draw them? Are you okay? Oh, we are. Just a couple. Okay, I'll do a couple. All right, so here's one. And here is two. Can we do the same, same ones? Yes, I'm going to do mine on the same ones. That's why I use two different colors. They could be drawing. They're all 
parallel. Same color. They're all parallel. They're all parallel. So watch what's going to Hey, watch what's going to happen. When you start here and you go in this direction, look what you just created. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight angles. You're, you're fixing to start talking about alternate interiors, which are like twos and sixes, fours and fives. Alternate exteriors, ones and eights and sevens and threes. Corresponding, two and seven, four and eight, six and three, five and one. Consecutive interior, two and five and four and six. You're fixing to start talking about all of those things, okay? Because they're going to give you which one, they're going to give you one of these. They're going to say, at a bearing of, and they're going to maybe tell you what five is. And then you can find all the rest of them. So you're bringing geometry. Yes. Okay, so here we go. Let's draw our north-south. Y'all, this is zero degrees north right here. Zero degrees north. So every time I give you an aeronautical bearing, it's gonna you're gonna start here and go to the right, go around that many degrees. Are you with me? Yes. Go okay, ahead. I'm gonna give you one of them. Sixty degrees. Draw me the bearing. Do you see how it's different from the other one? There is no north, south, east, or west. It's just sixty degrees. You always start from zero and you go to the right sixty degrees. Is everybody got it? Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, do we draw it like like if it was a compass? That makes sense. Yeah, this like is that. 60 no, degrees. This is my bearing. You understand? So you're just kind of guessing. You you're not guessing. No, that's a third. That's, that's 60 degrees. Okay? Now, you know what? For some of you, it might help if you do this little crosshatch thing because that's my 90. So I know he's 30 off my 90. You see what I'm saying? If that helps you, you can do that. All right, here's the next one. Are you ready? 155 degrees. 155 degrees. What's that between? 180 and 90. He's between 90 and 180, guys. There's 90 and here's 180. Are you ready? Yeah. There he is. Wait, what? This is 155 oh. degrees. Obviously, this right here is 25 degrees. Yes. Yeah. There's a 180. Turn your head. Why do you have to turn your head? Oh. Okay, are you ready? Here's the next one. 215 degrees. 215 degrees. You got it. Okay, so do you agree if I start here and go to right here, what's that? 90. 90. If I go to right here, what's that? 180. Is 215 more than 180? Yes. How much more than 180? 35. So from here, I need a 35 degree angle. So this Hey, I did that. It's 215 degrees. So I didn't draw them on the same thing. Okay, so tomorrow we will work um, one problem, all right? One problem, and then we will, I'll let you get started on your worksheets.